Well, thanks for joining us. And thanks for coming all the way uh, to Berlin. Um, I just wanted to actually give a, a kind of an introduction to the DRAD project, and I wanted to talk about what we've achieved. And then I also wanted to reflect about our journey as a research team, um, how we came from you know, where we started uh, this project. So it's going to be um, uh, it's a speech that I wrote. And then I'm going to introduce uh, my colleague, Professor Adarda of George Mason University, um, who came from Washington to give uh, the keynote for the conference. Um, I'm going to give the floor to him probably in 20, 25 minutes or so. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks, Raj. So um, in 1790, conservative political theorist Edmund Burke wrote of society as follows. Uh, Edmund Burke said that society is a partnership in all science, a partnership in all art, a partnership in every virtue, and in all perfection. As the ends of such a partnership cannot be obtained, uh, Burke wrote, except the many generations, it becomes a partnership not only between those who are living, those who are dead, and those who are to be born. The European Commission funded Horizon 2020 projects provides foundations and, and funding for, su for such partnerships. So DRAD, de-radicalization in Europe and beyond, detect, resolve, reintegrate project has the work of these partnerships with science, art, as well as every virtue and perfection, included since uh, December 2020. Let's hope that these virtues will remain for the next generations as well. The DRAD project consortium uh, comprises a group of social and computational scientists, thinkers, and practitioners. At its inception, DRAD involved 18 partners in 17 countries with a consortium ranging from Finland, Hungary, Slovenia, Jordan, Georgia, Iraq, Israel, France, Germany, Poland, Austria, UK, Serbia, Kosovo, Bosnia, Italy, and Turkey. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we lost Iraq and Jordan as partners along the way, despite our wishes and the wishes of our partners uh, in those countries as much as we could tell. Yet we studied their countries and produced the due research, uh, which you can find um, in our publications. Despite these mishaps, uh, DRAC has brought together an amazing group of junior and senior academics, third sector organizations, along the spectrum from humanities to artificial intelligence. Since the inception of our project, our day-to-day -day work has been somewhere between a downhill slalom and uphill cycle race to meet the demands of our very ambitious project. These are essentially both very excited races, but they can also make our everyday research work rather alienated from where we philosophically have started. By the time the DRAD project comes to an end, it will have finalized 57 deliverables including a highly aspirational exhibition, a digital map, which we are to launch tomorrow, a documentary, as well as nine ethics and data security related deliverables, nine country reports, which has included five to 17 countries each, three policy reports presenting arts and sports as the position media, how to mitigate the adverse effects of spatial planning and urban politics that may lead to radicalization with site-specific interventions and civic education-related interventions for de-radicalization. So these reports will be launched as well on Saturday at our policy meeting. We had three deliverables with uh, artificial intelligence guided methodologies applied to the study of radicalization, as well as human rights assessment of artificial intelligence related applications in survey radicalization, a much wider human rights risk assessment covering all the red activities, risk synthesis reports looking at radicalization and security forces, gender and sexuality related root cause of radicalization, forecasting uh, polarization extremism, the role of creative industries, media literacy as a resolution for extremism and radicalization. This is an impressive project. <laughs> Uh, most of these deliverables, their methodologies, approaches, and insights that they've offered have been translators in the study of radicalization. They are to guide future research in radicalization and extremism in every sort. It sometimes felt, at least to me, the DRAC team has written a report and or, and or carried out an activity on everything possible during the course of the last three years. We diligently worked and made the best of this amazing funding, which we were lucky to have won in 2020. Recognizing that people matter equally is a crucial step in the ongoing story of humanity's moral progress. 
Most of us recognize this equality to some extent already. Originally, originally we, we launched DRAT from our common understanding that convivial and non politicized relations can make the self and the others see each other as partakers of similar daily routines and shareholders of common problems. Particularly for the youngsters, this can range from finding work, housing, dealing with costs and expenses of everyday life, uh, limited local transportation, or twists and turns of various coups de foot when life meets love. Having said that, we, also, we are also all political animals. Over the recent years, our looking glass increasingly included politicized interpretations of each other's everyday existence and mundane reactions to what we all go through. What triggers radicalization is a type of looking glass, effectively a mirror that only shows the dark side of what we want to see in the other, and almost, and almost a negative of the self. This type of polarization triggers radicalization and extremist reactions. In radicalized individuals and their situations, we come across the alienated self and the other, sowing extreme grievance to each other. It is puzzling for a rational and human sensible to, to understand how come diversity is not celebrated but present. When silence and deliberation break, I am a victim and there are not attitudes set how polarized groups in society approach each other. If my only identity is that of the victim, as the Israeli writer Shulamit Haravan writes in her 1986 entitled essay, Identity Column Victim, I may commit any type of atrocity. Indeed, Jacqueline Rose suggests if we loosen our grip on suffering, discard any claim to own it, then we can ask a different question. How much pain can anyone hold in their mind at once? Must my pain be always greater yours, uh, than yours for it to count? To interpret these reactions, Girat has examined the micro-level foundations of radicalization to understand how individuals travel along the spectrum from unradicalized to radicalized and back to deradicalized positions. Our theoretical starting point is what we call the IGAP spectrum, that is, radicalization may begin with, a, with feelings of injustice, I, of being singled out or discriminated against because of one's identity or status. This can become a grievance, that is G, enmity against other social groups which can foster alienation, that's A, from the social and political order and, and from unradicalized members of the community. The ultimate effect uh, many individuals traveling along this, this spectrum will be uh, polarization, that's P, and that's I gap of cultural and political attitudes. Following this compass, the contribution of the DRAD, uh, the contribution of DRAD to certain radicalization and deradicalization can be summarized as follows. We've studied radicalizing in non-essentializing, in non non-binary terms. Namely, we have explored the drivers and hotspots of radicalization in a uniquely extensive geography of 17 states to show that radicalization has nothing to do with a certain set of states or regions. It can affect all kinds of qualities, groups, publics, and individuals. Second, we covered both institutional and non-institutional actors of radicalization it appears that states can also instrumentalize radicalization as much as the usual culprits. Third, we've seen radicalization cannot be entrenched into a singular ideology or belief, belief system, and extremism is cancerous as it appears in multifarious shapes and processes. At the start of DRAD, to serve more the purpose of a grant application rather than a clear-cut methodological approach, we've introduced four cases of radicalization, however, they soon become redundant as COVID kicked in and crimes and terror committed by states and state-like actors have started to affect expressive politics and uh, radicalized publics. Four, we realized that rather than lengthy and verbose policy language guide with radicalization approaches, we need to implement more informal, engaged and collaborative methods. This way we realized we can, we can reach out to those that are radicalization prone much easier. Five, we came to understand radicalization as an everyday phenomenon that can make anybody prone to it, depending on where they find themselves on the IGAP spectrum. Hence, to repeat, essentialization and stereotyping of a radicalized individual is a policy. Six, based on this, we developed our deradicalization approach as an intervention into mundane everyday settings. 
Innovatively, we, we looked at creative forms such as having two exhibitions in Belgrade and Paris, as well as a myriad of other interventions, including role play, game cards, spatial ethnography, dance, expressive theater. You can hear the details of these approaches on Saturday at our policy meeting as well. Seven, we carried out a cloud quantitative survey in all, in all the United countries except in Iraq to discover that at times even the majority populations may feel themselves discriminated in their countries as it appeared in hunger. Detailed results of the survey are published in our uh, deliverable 7.1 and our WFI paper on Friday as well by uh, my colleague uh, Talia Slima tomorrow. Now, having said this all, we still know that from playground to killing fields, the committers of violence always say that it originates from somebody or from somewhere else. The key to all anti-social behavior, writes Jack Rose, quoting the psychiatrist Lisa Son, was perfectly illustrated by a little boy he once saw on top of it on top on the top deck of a bus in Britain, who hit his baby brother on the head. And when he told the stuff by his mother, he retorted with no regard to truth that his baby brother had started it. In response, in the Dirac project, we tried to consolidate the other as an extension of the self rather than an internal difference. This will be our theoretical legacy. In the beginning of our Dirac journey, I think many of my colleagues would also appreciate, uh, we had no clue what we were in for. We had an idea and a grant. We had to plan and implemented it, and in, in retrospect, none of this would have been possible if we adamantly followed the rules or adhered to the usual procedure of doing research on radicalization. We thought we were doing our thing for a small circle, but we achieved great things. We surprised ourselves and many others. We did so not simply by pushing boundaries, but by expanding lines, moving walls, and ultimately growing the territory of social inclusion applied to the radicalization. And this will be our methodological legacy. Before we start the last dissemination event uh, of DRAD, I'd like to thank the DRAD consortium colleagues and PIs in 16 different institutions, some of whom are here. Can you please stand up? The, DI, the, the DRAD people. <laughs> please, please stand up, DRAD people. <laughs> Across 15 countries and their teams, our project officer, who's been amazing uh, all, the, uh, all this time uh, in, uh, in Brussels, our advisory board members, as well as our hosts in Berlin today. I have to thank the GCU team, uh, obviously, um, we are here today. For working with me um, around the clock and running this project as smoothly as possible. We've been extremely lucky to win this grand lab and privileged to lead it. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>